Okay, so our last unit is on measurement. And there are kind of two parts to the measurement unit. The first part is about looking at units. So we'll look at the imperial system and the metric system. And then after that, the sort of second part is about geometry. I'm looking at surface area and volume. So this is all stuff that we're fairly familiar with. Certainly surface area and volume you've done in previous years, and everybody's sort of heard of the imperial and metric units that we're going to look at. So the first lesson is on imperial measures. And so the imperial system is most used in the US and in Great Britain. However, in Canada, um, we also talk about, for example, um, our height. We talk about our height in feet and inches versus centimeters. Um, so in Canada, we have kind of a hybrid. Anyway, the units that we'll be looking at are the inch, the foot, the yard, and the mile. And there are the abbreviated versions um, for you. So just some information down here. Remember, one foot is the same as 12 inches and a yard is three feet. So remember, if it's three feet and there are 12 inches to a foot, a yard is also 36 inches. And down here, a mile is 1,760 yards, probably not the easiest number to work with, but that's also the same as 5,280 feet is one mile. And if I think about the number of inches in a mile, that's gonna be a lot. It turns out to be 63,360 inches is also one mile. So there's some um, you know, unit conversions that you'll wanna write down somewhere to use during this lesson and this homework. Let's turn our attention back to this question. Which unit would you use to measure the following things? So the length of a football field, probably yards. The width of a photo, inches. Remember that you might have a photo that's a five by seven. What does that mean? Five inches by seven inches. The length of a piece of paper, also inches. In Canada, a standard piece of paper is 11 uh, and a half by eight or eight and a half, sorry, no, it's eight and a half by 11. Um, the length of a marathon is in miles. All right, so um, the other idea that isn't on here is the idea of a referent. And a referent is something that we would use in place of a ruler or a measuring tape or something like that. So for example, a referent could be that, um, you know, uh, one stride could be one yard. For example, so I want to measure something approximately, I could use a referent in lieu of, um, you know, measuring tape or, or a ruler. Okay, so let's get into doing some of the conversions. So first off, we're going to convert um, eight yards to feet and then to inches. So um, I know that you would just go, well, I would just times it by three to get the feet. But I want to show you a process that we call unit conversion. And where I write out eight yards, the given amount, the given quantity, and then I multiply it by a conversion factor where I put the required units up here and the given units down there. And I'll show you why. So eight yards times the unit that I want is feet. So I'm gonna put feet up here. And I'm gonna put yards down there. And now I'm gonna put three feet is one yard because that's the conversion that we saw in the table right here. And just like if I was multiplying, say, something like 2 times 5 over 2, these 2s would cancel. So if they're numbers, or down here, where they're units, they also cancel, 
and I would get 24 feet. And now I can take those 24 feet and show a similar conversion to get inches. The unit I require is inches, so that goes in the top. Feet are the units I've been given, and I want to be able to cancel them, so they go like that. One foot is 12 inches. So this is going to give me 288 inches. Why don't you pause the video here and try this one. See if you can get it. It's the same process. All right, so hopefully you saw six and a half yards times three feet in one yard is going to give me 19.5 feet as the yards cancel. And then I might take those feet, um, or even I might start with the original quantity, six and a half yards instead. And one yard, I want inches, and I know that there are 36 in a yard. So those cancel, and I get 234 inches. So after this, you might say, well, that seems like a lot of work to write out all of this just to time something by 36 or 3 or whatever. And I would say that that's fair. But in the sciences, particularly in chemistry and physics, showing these types of unit cancelling and so on is very helpful. So it's good to practice it here. Okay, so now we're going to convert something to feet and inches. And this is a little bit trickier. So what I want to remember is that one foot is 12 inches. So basically what I want to do with this 65 inches is convert it from an improper fraction like this to a mixed fraction. So if I take out my calculator and I divide 65 by 12, I get a 5 and then I get a decimal. So I'm, I'm going to um, do that division on my calculator. So take out yours and try that as well. 65 divided by 12 is 5.41 and the 6 repeats. So that tells me that I have 5 and something twelfths, right? So if I do 65 divided by 12, I get 5.416, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm going to do in my calculator is just subtract that 5 and get that 0.416 repeating in my calculator. And then I'm going to times it by 12 to sort of undo this. So if you do that, you get 5. So that tells me that this is a 5 as well. Okay, so what does this mixed fraction mean? It means that I have 5 holes, which are the 5 feet, and I have 5 inches left. So 65 inches is the same as 5 feet 5 inches. All right? There you have it. So, whoops. <laughs> what I would say is try this one, 87 inches. How many feet and inches is that? And then we'll look at yards, feet, and inches after. So maybe pause here and try that one yourself. All right, so I hope you did the same thing. 87 over 12 is how many and how many twelfths? So I take out my calculator and I divide, and I get 7.25. So that 7 goes here. Then I subtract the 7, and I'm left with 0.25. And then I'm going to times that by 12 again, and that's going to give me 4. Or sorry, 3, excuse me. Three twelfths is a quarter. So I have seven, whoops, I have seven feet three inches. Okay, and now lastly, what I want to do is um, convert to yards, feet, and inches. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so I have some more room over here. So from the first part, this is my answer from the first part, 5 feet, 5 inches. Now I want to know how many yards, feet, and inches is that. So if you envision 5 feet, so I have 1, 
whoops, two, three, four, five feet, right? And I know that one yard is three feet. So I could call this section one yard. And then I have two feet left over that don't make up a yard. So I would go one yard, two feet, and then this five inch piece is way too small to make up a yard, so that just stays the same. Let's see that again over here. So over here I have seven feet, three inches. Let's draw out those seven feet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Imagine seven foot long rulers lined up. So I would go, well, these three are one yard. Then I have another yard. And then I have this one foot left over. So seven feet, three inches is the same as two yards, one foot, and then this piece, three inches. Okay, is the same as 87 inches. So these all mean the same thing. We're talking about the same length. I'm just representing it in different ways. Another way to think about this is how many groups of three are in seven? There are two, and I have one left over. And then I have this three inch segment here as well. Okay. So now we have a couple of problems to look at, and this is with um, a map between two towns, Pincher Creek and Crow's Nest Pass in southern Alberta. And on the map, it's 8.5 inches, this blue um, segment but from, from here to here. So on the map, um, it's 8.5 inches. Obviously, in reality, the distance is much larger, right? So that's what we're looking for. What is that distance? And in miles. So a scale is always the, um, the, uh, the map to reality. So this means one inch on the map is actually 253,440 inches in reality. So what I'm gonna set up here is called a cross product. So, or a proportion. So one on the map is 253,440 in reality. So remember it's map over reality is this. And then the question is, well, what if on the map it's eight and a half what is that distance in reality, right? That's what we're looking for. So now I'm going to cross multiply these two um, denominators. X is 8.5 times 253,440 inches. Remember this unit was inches. And that gives me 2 million, whoops, 2 million 138,000 400 inches. Now, no one in their right mind is going to say that the distance between two towns is 2,138,400 inches. That's not really a useful unit to pick. So we've been asked to convert it to miles. So what I'm going to do is take that 2,138,400 um, inches or 440, sorry, I've written it wrong, 440 inches. And I'm gonna convert it first to feet. There's 12 inches in one foot, inches cancel, and then I'm gonna get a number of feet in my calculator if I times it by one and divide it by 12. But I don't want feet, I want miles. So now you see I have feet up here, I'm gonna put feet down here so that they cancel and miles up there, and one mile is 5,280 feet. So I'm gonna take that answer from this calculation, and I'm gonna times it by one, and divide by 5,280, and you should get 33.75 miles. All right, here's another one, talking about a model train. So we have the scale. So in this case, it's like the toy size, to the real size, the size in reality. 
So our scale is 1 to 87 is 8 inches to what is the length of this actual train engine. So again, I'm going to cross multiply. Notice the scale has no units. So whatever units I put in, in this case inches, is what I'm going to get out. So x is 8 inches times 87. So if I pop that into my calculator, I get 696 inches. But I want to know what it is in feet. So I'm going to take that and times it by 1 foot over 12 inches, and that gives me 58 feet. All right? So that's how we work with a scale like that.